I don't even know if there was a substantial sign saying there was Hubert's when I was going. There was a, the wall was. Yeah. You know, what was it, what did it look like on the street there? Well, um, I don't even know if there was a substantial sign saying there was Hubert's when I was going. There was a, the wall was painted that said Hubert's. Uh, definitely, the w wall of the facade of the big building. But uh, you had to go through this penny arcade with the, you know, the rifles firing and the, it wasn't uh, video games, they didn't exist then, but pinballs and mechanical, uh, penny, penny arcade we called it. And it was like, you know, you put in a penny or a dime or a nickel and something would happen. And you had to work your way all the way through that, all the way to the back, because that was the storefront. That was the, um, the w where you entered. And it was only at the back of this penny arcade, all the way as far from the street as you could get, that you could buy your ticket, and it was probably 50 cents, even, even in the 60s, or I don't think it was much more in any case. And um, it was very inexpensive. And then you would uh, go through a turnstile, down a stairs, a long stairs, and then you would make sort of a little turn onto a platform, and then you make, make a small step down the stairs. And as you came down the stairs on your right, there was one ballet stage, which was no longer used, probably was used in the 20s, but we're talking about the early 50s, late, uh, I mean the late 50s or early 60s. And I remember there's a big rat cage full of rats to feed the snake, the, the big python or a boa constrictor, whatever the, one of the dancing girls used. And uh, we didn't look at the rats very often, they were covered with a rug or a blanket or something, but they were like hanging on, the, it was a pretty gruesome view. And also there was some material from the the Collier Brothers uh, apartment that, uh, where these two guys, uh, they couldn't even find the bodies because, like me, they were a pack rat and they collected all this stuff. And then I, I suppose there was some leftover from some uh, kind of, um, you know, gangster relics like a hat or, a, you know, Wild West cowboy people, you know, the hats with bullet holes in them and stuff. That was on the first stage. And then there was a blank wall. And then you had two stages together. One of them is the one I finally worked on. These are ballet stages about eye level to the audience. And the audience is, is down on a concrete floor. And you come around, there'd be two. And then there was the room where the flea circus was. And then I'll, further along that wall, there was another ballet stage, which I think was used sometimes. And then there was the sort of stage, there was an opening going back to the dancing girls area. And then there was a, a ballet stage where I think he did the pitch for the, the girl show. And then to the, coming back around toward the staircase again, there was um, the, um, another stage which had an electric chair and it had a, um, a glasses lined up. Professor Harold uh, Smith played the glasses there. And Harold Smith was there even more than Presto the Magician. Harold Smith was there every time I went there playing the glasses. And I think he'd been on the Ringling Show playing the glasses. I think he probably only knew two tone, uh, tunes. I think uh, Stars and Stripes Forever might have been one, but Anchors Away was certainly one that he did. I'd seen him on the Kate Smith television show, and he did those too. They put him in a tuxedo instead of his usual uh, sideshow thing. And uh, I'm pretty sure I saw him on the Ringling Sideshow in 1953 as well. Uh, and he just dipped his fingers in the glasses and then uh, rubbed the rims of the glasses to, to play the glasses. And he was not a very animated person. Uh, but even after Hubert's closed in 1956, he was still worked there. He went up into the Penny Arcade section. And I, I, any time I went by, I would go in there, even though there was no Hubert's Museum left, because I knew at least Harold Smith was still there. And I'd go in there and uh, just, if I was with somebody, I would introduce them to him. And he would say, well, the great thing about circus is, is it doesn't need a censor. <laughs> and he would have his apron for ch making change for the penny arcade or a broom in his hand. He, usually, he kept himself very busy sweeping up. Uh, so uh, yeah, what, could you explain what a ballet stage is? Yeah, a, a ballet stage um, uh, would be like a, a sideshow stage. A sideshow meaning a freak show uh, type of stage. There, there are two ways you use a ballet and it's for it's for the ballyhoo, as you were, as it were, you know, the ballyhoo, ballet stage. Uh, so it's uh, for, for attracting people, getting it up on a stage. This could be on the midway, these stages would be, uh, even, even with a traveling show, they'd be on the midway. And then inside the tent, you would have sh stages like this. Now, uh, Hewitt's Museum was a permanent installation, 
but they still had stages, permanent stages built in at the same height that they would have been on a sideshow, so that the performers who came through were very comfortable just going onto those stages and working. Now, who were some of the people that you could talk about that were there that you saw before? Who were some of the more acclaimed acts at Hubert's? Well, let me start with the ones that I know I saw there, and I actually saw them, uh, <laughs> know that I saw them. Preston the Magician was there often. Now, he was, uh, you know, there are two kinds of sideshow attractions, the, the ones that are sort of medical monsters and the ones that are uh, entertainers or self-made, so the sword swallowers and stuff like that. I was really on the fringe of the self-made because I was a juggler there, but uh, I saw Preston the Magician often there. I often saw Joe Allen, the human corkscrew, who's, who, who, I remember two things that Joe Allen did. He did some contortions with his arms, but he also went through a coat hanger. He pulled a coat hanger, a wire coat hanger, over his head and worked it down his body and off. And, uh, you know, it, it sort of got kind of, we're having a little problem at the pelvic area, and he, if he got a laugh that, and the, 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 it was so strange in the in the 60s people he would actually get in trouble for that you know it would be like that's not fun now of course if you go to the Bindelstiff circus that's the, what it's all about but uh, and then he would put on a trench coat and then rotate his body around so his feet were going one way and his shoulders were going the other way and I must have seen him very early because I remember when I went with uh, Hagen Brothers Circus I mentioned him to the guy who had a, a snake pit show, and he said he used to be his partner, and he did, he did the trench coat and the twisting too, and he claimed I don't remember his name, but he was with a, out with a under canvas circus. Uh, I remember Andy Potato Chips. Andy Potato Chips was a midget, and uh, he didn't do much. He just uh, claimed to speak many languages, and nobody in the audience usually could speak any languages other than English, so we never really tested him on that, but. Uh, and then I, I remember um, seeing Harold Smith, of course, with the glasses, definitely. And then I think I, re I saw, I'm not sure, it would have been an early, I probably saw Prince Randian, who was the human caterpillar, armless and legless wonder, who uh, with his lips was able to get out a cigarette and light it. Uh, and I was right in his face, wherever I saw him. I could have seen him on the Ringling Show or in the big side show in, uh, uh, River, Riverview or Riverside Park in Chicago. Uh, there are not too many places I could have seen him because I only saw those things once at least. But, but these people, I could have seen them both. You know what I mean? The, the, the Hubert's Museum was year round, so you could always see things. Circus one day, you know, you had one shot at a circus. And, this, and the uh, carnival, the amusement park side shows would usually be seasonal too. They would only be in the fall or only in the summer or something like that or only in the spring, depending on if they were off with the circus. But Hubert's, you could come to New York any time of year, and Hubert's would be open. Uh, and you could go down there and see attractions. And there were about five or six, I guess, and then uh, the show would start over again. And you, you didn't see the flea circus there? No, the flea circus was long gone by the time I was there. Uh, I don't know how long. Um, I'm th my, my guess would be about 1957. And I would have been in the Midwest graduating from high school then. And so I never saw the Flea Circus at Hubert's. I did see it on uh, Art Baker's You Asked For It, where they did it, uh, a TV version of it. So I know pretty much what the acts were and what they did, you know, the, the, the foot juggling seal. Uh,